Good morning, Park Hill. How are you all today? Happy Advent! It started! We catch up with the Walmart decorations finally, right? All right, let's our voices catch up too. Let's stand and sing this morning. Is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. We have heard on high Sweetly singing o'er the plains And the mountains in reply Echoing their joyous strains I'd like to dismiss the children of Children's Chapel who are not taking communion. And if you haven't already, please sign the attendance folder that you can find somewhere near you so we will know that you were here. Got quite a few announcements, so uh, let's buckle in and get them done. Today, as Joe had mentioned, begins Advent season, which is our spiritual preparation for the celebration of the birth of Christ. And one of the ways to help prepare for this is through our Advent devotional booklet. If you haven't grabbed yours already, they are available back there on the table. They're also available outside the sanctuary and by the church office. As part of our uh, worship at Advent time, uh, we have lighting of Advent candles, which will take place in a few moments. We want to thank Casey and Michelle Thomason and Grace and Dakota Garrett for leading this meaningful time this morning. Our Hanging of the Green worship service will take place today at 11 o'clock in the sanctuary. We hope you all plan to stay and join us uh, as we decorate our sanctuary for the season. With that being in mind, our youth and children are participating in this service. And um, that being so, we have to rehearse. 
So at 10 o'clock, immediately following this worship service, our youth and children, kindergarten through fifth grade, will report to the sanctuary and not Sunday school to rehearse for Hanging of the Green. And finally, our parents' day out is planned for this coming Saturday from 11 to 2. And if you haven't already RSVP'd and you want your child to attend so you can either rest or shop or eat with your significant other, whatever you want to do, you must RSVP to Leslie McDaniel by tomorrow. You can find her contact information in the bulletin. There are even other announcements in the bulletin. You can look at those as you're able. But for now, let's stand up and say hello to somebody. All right, if we can make our way back. We, we usually have a song that goes here, which works perfectly to kind of bring everything back together, but it's a, it's a different Sunday, so I get to try to, to corral everybody, but it's okay. I teach high school students, so I can, uh, I can get you back where we need to be. If you can hear me, clap once. Yeah, there we go. I, I've, I paid a lot of money to learn how to do that. <laughs> All right, they've asked me to talk a little bit about our uh, Advent decorations. As we look around our worship area this morning, uh, you can't help but notice the season of Advent is here. With the nativity scene, we are reminded of the miraculous birth of our Savior, how we came to serve and love all people, how we went from a lowly stable to a kingdom that has no end. With the outreach Christmas tree, we are reminded of the gift of God given, uh, the gift God has given us in Jesus Christ. May each light on that tree remind us that the light of the world has come. And finally, all around the CFLC, you'll notice the Chrismons, a word combining the name of Christ with the word monogram. These aren't just Christmas decorations. They are symbols that represent Jesus, his name, his ministry, and his importance. As we gather here to worship throughout Advent, May all of these serve as reminders of God's great love for us as shown through the gift of his son, Emmanuel, God with us. And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who is called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Later in Luke's story, 11, 27 through 28, Jesus was teaching, and a woman in the, gr in the crowd began to cry out, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breasts that nursed you. And Jesus said, Blessed indeed are those who hear the word of God and they obey it. There is a connection between Mary's openness and ours, a parallel between her room, womb and our hearing, her nourishment and our faithfulness. Mary is not a handmaid, but a servant being violated for her reproductive organs. Rather, Mary responded, here am I. 
She is an empowered mother, a loving and consenting co-creator in the birth. When Mary offers up her body, she goes before us, showing us how we can also open up our lives to the abundance that God has for us. When Mary suckles Jesus, she models how we can nurture a life in God, being surrounded and embraced by God's presence. As Meister Eckert wrote, through Mary's example, the Son of God is always being born in us. As we light this candle, we open ourselves to God's spark. We echo Mary's words, here am I, as we enter this season of painful longing and abundant possibilities. Let us pray. God, our creator, open us to your spark, your life, and your vitality. Be born in us today. Amen. Amen. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn King, peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies, with angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Heart the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. To the newborn Prince of Peace, hail the Son of Righteousness. Light and life to all He brings, risen with healing in His wings. Mount He lays His glory. Born that man no more may die Born to raise the sons of earth Born to give him second birth Heart the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King King of heaven come now King of heaven come let your glory reign, shining like the day, King of heaven come. King of heaven rise up, who can stand against us? You are strong to save in your mighty name, King of heaven come. Heaven come, King 
King of heaven. King of heaven, God. King of heaven, God. Let your glory reign, shining like the day, King of heaven, come. We gather here this morning, and we sing King of heaven, come. And at the same time, he has come, and he is with us, and he invites us to this table. So as we are invited to come... And we look forward to this coming and this season of Advent. We are also coming to this table. So as we gather today in remembrance of him, let us each come and participate in this gift. Let us pray. Please pray with me. Thank you, Father, for this day and another opportunity to be with our church family. We know we are blessed beyond words. Today, as we begin the Advent season, we praise you for that starry night and our Lord as a baby. Help us to also remember that on that night, you knew that he would die 33 years later on the cross for our sins. This bread and cup today represent that love. Amen. Hard to think of a baby being betrayed, isn't it? And yet, on the night that this baby who had grown up was betrayed, he took bread and he gave thanks and he said, This is my body given for you. Take and eat it. And then he took the cup and he said, This cup is my blood shed for the remission of sin. It's the new covenant in my blood. Take, drink, and remember me. So we eat of the bread and we drink of the cup. 
we celebrate this new covenant until he comes again. Mercy was revealed with tenderness and peace. My fate was surely sealed until he rescued me. His pardon for my sin, his bounty for my need. But slavery and chains, I am redeemed. Heaven can't contain the glory of the sun. Jesus is the Christ, the saving one. His love has made a way, the grave is overcome. Jesus is the Christ, the saving one. No fear can hold me down, no darkness steal my joy. No blood has been poured out, the enemy destroyed. Death could not hold him down The cross was not enough To steal away his throne For he is God And heaven can contain The glory of the sun Jesus is the Christ The saving one His love has made a way The grave is overcome Jesus is the Christ, the saving one. And anyone who calls upon his name, they will be saved. They will be saved. And anyone who calls upon his name, they will be saved. They will be saved. The Son, Jesus is the Christ, the saving one. His love has made a way, the grave is overcome. Jesus is the Christ, the saving one. And anyone who calls upon his name, they will be saved. They will be saved. Are you sure? That was a questionable, I'm not sure, should I clap? So we come to our time of prayer. I have a couple I want to mention. Uh, Myra Jo Little, we've been talking about her. She had a successful surgery on Tuesday and has been moved to St. Vincent Rehab in Sherwood for continued healing. And then little Lily Hampton, um, something bad happened to her at school. She got her finger pretty much crushed in the door. A blessing in that that I found was that she was actually holding the door open for someone. Isn't that sweet? Anyway, she had uh, reconstructive surgery on Thursday, was successful, and she's recovering well, and we continue to pray for her. Now I want you to close your eyes. Think of some folks that you need to lift up in prayer. Say their name to Jesus. With those, with these that I've mentioned, and with those on our prayer list, let's turn to God in prayer. Holy God, as we begin to prepare our hearts to receive the one you're sending, forgive us for all the times we've missed seeing you all around us. For all the times we've doubted your presence and for all the times we've failed to help others. We thank you for your grace and forgiveness, for hearing our prayers and challenging us to seek righteousness and for your gifts of love and acceptance. Lord, we live in a world full of darkness. Come into our midst and comfort us. For some of us, the darkness is bearable, but we shouldn't have to face it alone. 
Help us know your loving presence. Help us feel your gracious peace. And for others, the darkness is stifling and they can't find their way through the chaos. Help them to reach out. Give them confidence to ask for help. As Advent moves forward, our minds are filled with thoughts of Christmas, thoughts of the story of light becoming and coming into our darkened world, thoughts of a little baby named Jesus. Open us now to more than just thoughts. Open us to the joy that awaits us this special season. Open our hearts to real joy found in Christmas, the joy that doesn't come from the presence under a tree, but in the presence of your light in our lives, the presence of your grace, the presence of your love. We ask all this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and King, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man. You were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known. Above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what you're worth. Lay behind the stone You live to die Rejected and alone Like a rose Trampled on the ground You took the fall And thought of me Above all Stone. You live to die, rejected and alone, like a rose, trampled on the ground. You took the fall and thought of me. You are crucified, lay behind the stone. You live. Rejected and alone, like a rose, trampled on the ground. You took the fall and thought of me. Above all, you took the fall and thought of me. Well, could you be more excited? Well, tell your face if you are. It's that time of year again, right? 
And the song says it's the most wonderful time of the year. I love Christmas. I love Christmas. I owe it all to Easter. But I love Christmas. I love everything about Christmas that has anything to do with the real meaning of Christmas. And I love a lot of the stuff that doesn't have anything to do with the real meaning of Christmas at the same time. I love Christmas. And we as the church officially start today this Advent, this coming, this longing, this preparing, all of this. We start it today. But we've started it already, right? 98.5, they started playing Christmas songs about the time school started, didn't they? <laughs> Some stores started putting up Christmas stuff right after the 4th of July. Some really, really organized people started their Christmas shopping December 26th. <laughs> if you have one of those remote controls where you can punch record, how many of you have already recorded a Christmas special on TV this year? Three out of a whole room. All right, how about this? How many have already cried at a Hallmark Christmas special? Have you noticed that none of the characters in those Hallmarks are my age? I guess if you're my age, you just can't be in love. You have to be about 30, 32, good looking, not fat, short, and overweight. Some people started getting ready for Christmas last year when they didn't even take down the Christmas decorations. You can drive by some people's houses, and they're still up from last year. In fact, they're still up from Christmas 2012. You can tell because there's a little moss growing on them. <laughs> oh, getting ready for Christmas. We really start today in our Bible... All one has to do is look at the beginning of Luke, if you will, to kind of get a sense of the advent, the coming, the anticipation of where Luke starts off in Luke chapter 1. Luke shares the story of Zechariah and, a, and, a, and an angel visiting. Isn't that interesting? Angels and humans, this visiting thing that happens between the two. Good old Zach, he's an old guy by this time, a priest, a good priest, a faithful priest. He and his wife, they don't have any children, but God's on the move here, so look out. Zach is in the temple doing his thing. It's, it's his turn, lighting the incense, praying, ministering, doing what he's supposed to do, praying as a faithful servant and doing this burning of incense so when others see the smoke going up, they do this twice a day. They burn the incense, they do the burning, and as the smoke arises from, from that place, it's a sign for people to stop and pray. And people believed that those prayers would be attached to that smoke as it rose up to God and God would hear their prayers. But on this day as the Smoke was going up. As prayers were going up, as messages were all going up, there was a message coming down. Do you ever think of your message that are going up to God or having an answer coming down? human and angels having conversations and this will happen a moment all over again but right in the middle of this message is a don't be afraid <laughs> don't be afraid your prayer has been heard hey Zach you're going to have a son I put myself, or I try to put myself in his place. And I'm thinking that he said, 
<clears throat> That's a really old prayer. I prayed that prayer about 40 years ago. Zechariah had obviously prayed for a son and for the coming Messiah repeatedly. He and his wife Elizabeth, they so wanted this. But then he hears, and this phrase is put out there, how can this be? How can this be? Doesn't that sound just like us? I mean, humanity doesn't change very much, do we? Right? Our clothes just change. They have the same question, the same attitude. How can this be? If you want to read more about that, I want you to go to the first chapter of Luke and you can see the rest of it. But it's an Advent story because it sets up the coming or starts the ball rolling. And that's what Advent is doing. Advent is starting the ball rolling for us. And the story about Zach. Zachary and his wife Elizabeth, it starts the ball rolling for us. And it leads somewhere. And with that, we go to Luke, the first chapter, 26 through 38. It's, it's where the birth of Jesus is foretold. And it's where we see another angel visit and another how can this be moment. So we read. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. And I can't believe that she, this might be the first how can this be moment. An angel talking to me. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered, What sort of greeting might this be? I'm a girl. I'm a female. I'm not of any special house. How can this be? And the angel said to her as well, Do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God. Another, how can this be? How have I found favor with God? Don't be afraid. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. And if she was of this day and age, I'm sure she would have said a phrase kind of like, Say what? How can this be? How can this be? I passed fifth grade biology. How can this be? I'm thinking that the... Oh, Gabriel had to stop here for just a second. There's a pause, maybe, just to let this sink in for a little bit. Can you imagine, first of all, Gabriel showing up, giving you a message, don't be afraid, I've got something for you that, that you need to hear that you won't, won't make any sense to you. How can this be? There had to be a pause. He will be great and he will be called the son of the most high and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. Here's where it is. She's thought it but now she says it. Mary said to the angel, how can this be? Since I'm a virgin. I mean, of everything Gabriel said, of everything she's trying to emotionally and mentally catch up, she's stuck right here on this one thing. How can this be? And we get to verse 35. The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. That's it. That's how it can be. 
at some point in time, we have to do what Mary does. We have to believe or not. She models an example for all of us here because she chooses to believe even when she's been saying, how can this be? What a great model for us. How many of you have ever, ever thought a version of, how can this be in your life? Better yet, anyone here not had an, how can this be moment? It can be because God said so. And we can choose to believe or not, because in verse 37, it shares this with us. For nothing will be impossible with God. You know, I have no idea what's going on with everyone here. I know about some of you, but not with everyone. So please, please, please be reminded of this as we celebrate the first day, the first Sunday in Advent Take this passage with you for the rest of December. Nothing is impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Let it be with me. Nothing is impossible with God. Let it be with me. Let me be part of the story. Let me be your vessel. Let me participate. Let me, I'm honored. And we move here from the impossible to the possible. There's a theological question that has to be resolved here. Because there's this tension in these two statements that are, that are colliding together. This, how can this be? And let it be with me according to your word. And this whole thing, this whole passage, it, it moves us from the absence of God to the presence of God to the fulfillment of God's promises. It moves us from the impossible to the possible, from the how can it be? To the it will be. And somehow, some way, we need to navigate the, the radical transformation in these three short verses from this peasant girl to this prophet, from Mary to the mother of God, from how can this be to a life of discipleship follower and being the vessel that God called her to be. In a very real way, this is the appropriate transition from Advent or the coming and arrival to Christmas, a promised reality. From the coming of to the reality of. This is going to happen. So one of your two takeaway alerts this morning Mary's story moves us all from who we think we are to what God has called us to be. When you think of this teenager, when you think of this mother, when you think of this how can be moment, here's what it does. It takes us from who we think we are to who God's called you to be. God called Mary and God calls us to move from an observant believer to a declaring participant. So our response need to be just like Mary's. So let it be with me. So let it be with me. This last Friday was 
just an awful day for me. I have another word written down here, but I'm not going to say it. I wasn't here, and I couldn't be here. Last year on November 30th, last, which is this Friday, my daughter didn't wake up on earth, but she woke up in heaven. And I needed to get through Friday and all that I did and needed to do to remember her so I could get ready for Saturday, a day when we all come together and came together at the church to decorate, to be ready, to get ready for the day. From the, from the coming of a day that I hated to the coming of a day and a time I looked forward to. And I had to live out I love Christmas. I love Advent. And I had to say what Mary had to say. Here I am. Do what you need to do. I love getting ready. I love the anticipation. I love the decorating. But oh, I love and trust Christ the Messiah more. And as I close today, as Crossroad wants to come back up, I want to share this with you. As you do whatever it is that you're going to do this Advent and Christmas season to get ready, I'm going to ask you to consider, or better yet, do this one thing. Be a participant, not an observer. Find your way to be a participant and don't just sit back and observe. Participate in something that leads you from your Friday to Advent and on to Christmas. And I close with Elizabeth and good old Zach. For Here's what Elizabeth says that I want to share with you this morning as I close. She says, this is what the Lord has done for me when he looked favorably on me and took away the disgrace. He took away her obstacle so she could get ready. Watch your obstacle. What's your obstacle to getting ready? How can this be? It can be and will be for all of us by being a participant, not an observer. Let us pray. Our God, we thank you for today, and we thank you for this first candle of hope. I don't know how people do life without hope in you, without hope in their faith, without hope in your word. Oh God, as we gather here today and we start this season of Advent, this coming, this arrival we look forward to as we walk and go down a journey to Christmas morning, oh God, be with us as we all look at what it means to be a participant in this journey and not just an observer. Oh God, hear our prayers as they go up and open our ears so that we would listen as your message comes down. And it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. If there's anyone here today that has not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I would love for you to consider the question today, to have a conversation with Stephen and I, anybody here. If you're looking for a church home, we'd love to be that for you. Could we all stand and sing together? breaks the power of sin and darkness, whose love is mighty and so much stronger, the King of glory, 
the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder, the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You lay down your life That I would be set free Whoa, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me our chaos back into order, who makes the orphan a son and daughter, the King of glory, the King of glory, who rules the nations with truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of its brilliance, the King of glory, the King above all kings, yeah, this is amazing grace. This is a failing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy, worthy Worthy of this is amazing grace. This is a failing love that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross. You lay down your life that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I see for all that you've done for me. All that you've done for me. Would you pray with me? Oh, God, we thank you for this place. Oh, we thank you for these people. We thank you for your hand that holds us, and we thank you for Advent that opens a door and welcomes us on a journey to Christmas. Oh, God, may we be participants and not just observers as we walk forward. It's in Jesus' name that we have gathered, and we pray. Amen. There is a candle in every soul Some brightly burning, some dark and cold There is a spirit that brings a fire Ignites a candle and makes its home Carry your candle Run to the darkness, seek out the hopeless, the confused and torn. Hold out your candle for all to see it. Take your candle and go light your world. Take your candle and go light your world. Carry your candle, run to the darkness, 
seek out the whole the confused and cold. Hold out your candle for all to see.